Now we're going to take a look at force sensitive resistors or FSRs. They're really cool. They're a very small form factor. They're, they make a great analog sensor for measuring the force when applied to it. Now you can't really use these for a scale for super high accurate measuring, but you can use them in a lot of other applications and I'll show you how to hook them up. Now they're not like a potentiometer, they're more like a button, but they're a button that has a little more than just on and off. The easiest way to hook these up is to use a breadboard. I like to put them in pretty close to the edge. And then what I'll do is I'll take a piece of wire Strip the ends of that. And then I will bend it down and I'll just use this wire to kind of hold it in place. Now it looks strange. It's not creating any closed circuit or anything. It's literally just to hold these down in place. It's great for prototyping. And that's it. So now it's being held down a little more manageable to press on the pad here. So let's take a look at the code before we wire it up. I already have opened here on the product page. I, I bought my FSR from Adafruit. They're available from many locations. And there's a great explanation of how they work, how to measure it, a little bit on how to hook it up. And we'll stop right here. And basically what you want to do is there's two wires coming out of here. One of them we want to hook up to positive five volt on the Arduino. And the other one we wanna hook up just like a button through a 10K resistor. So I'll go ahead and jump that 10K over to the ground rail. And then I'll go from the ground rail to a free ground pin on the Arduino right there. So I will sneak in this wire to analog zero. So now just like a button, I have one pin connected to five volts and the other pin is connected through a resistor to ground. Now the way an FSR works is as I press on it, it decreases the resistance. So as I press on this, the electricity will now flow through analog zero rather than through ground. So let's take a look at wiring up the LED. The LED is going to pin 11. So I can grab a couple more jumper wires here and I can plug this into pin 11. And I'll put the positive there. And then the negative, I'm going to go through a 220 ohm resistor. I can plug that into the ground rail. Basic wiring of a button, basic wiring of an LED, but now we'll take a look at the code and see why it's not so basic. I can grab the code right from the site here, or you can click copy code. And now I will launch my Arduino. Maybe I'll hide this one to make it a little more clear. Paste it in here. And again, we want to make sure that the UNO is selected and the right port. Verify the code. And it's asking for me to save it, which I'll do really quick. And now I'll upload it. You can see these LEDs start blinking. There they go. And now it's done. So now you can see when I press this, it comes on. But unlike a button, I can press this just a little bit. get a little bit of signal. Press it hard and it lights up even brighter. And that's done through some really interesting code. We'll walk through it briefly right now and I'll pick out one of the things that I really like about how this code's written. So basically you have your sensor in analog pin zero, pretty straightforward. Then you have your LED in pin 11. Again, very straightforward. Your readings, your LED brightness. So we're holding those positions to be written to the code. We have a serial monitor. If we want to look at what we're actually reading. And then in the loop, we have reading that analog pin, printing analog read equal, 
and then the reading. I, we can actually take a look at that if I open up the serial monitor right now and press on this really quick. You can see there's the analog value. Now what's really cool about this is a really interesting function that I use quite often in my own code. So to write that brightness, when we read this resistor, we, we are going to translate the analog values, which is 0 to 1023 in this case, because that's how many, that's the resolution of this sensor. So it's 1024, but since we include 0, it's 0 to 1023. Now in LED, when we do pulse width modulation, you can only write from 0 to 255. So what we do is we call this function called a map function. And that's just what I want to point out really quickly. Map allows you to take a range of numbers and map them to a different range of numbers. So for instance, if I took range 1 to 10 and mapped it from 1 to 100, when I looked up 5, it would actually equal 50. Hopefully that makes sense. 2.5 would equal 25. 7.5 would equal 75. So in this case, we map 0 to 20, 1023 to, to 0 to 255. And that will take the 1024 steps of resolution from the sensor and map them to the 255 steps of the LED pulse width modulation. And you can see why you can't really use this for a scale. It's, it's, it's accurate, but it's not highly accurate. It's great for measuring weights, general weights. If you want to use something a little more accurate, there are things called load sensors. You can Google them and check, check them out. They are much more accurate, but they're also much more expensive. So that is FSRs. It's a great addition to your project whenever you want to sense the weight of something.